Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is an Incan citadel situated 8,000 feet, 2,440 meters, above sea level in a Peruvian mountain range dating back to the 15th century. Built with polished dry stone walls in a classical Incan architectural style, the site cuts through the mountain range called the Cordillera Oriental. Its three principal buildings are the Sun Temple, the Room of the Three Windows, and the possible sundial in Tihuatana. This 1911 photograph by Yale archaeologist Hiram Bingham shows Machu Picchu as he encountered it on an expedition of Incan ruins. At the time, the area was overrun by vegetation, although three families were living on the ridge in wooden huts near the site. Machu Picchu was covered in jungle vines and used by these local families for farming. In fact, a young boy from one of those families took Bingham up the mountain from where he took the photo. While locals knew of the archaeological site, Bingham's photograph served as the site's first introduction to the world, and even to some Peruvians. Archaeologists believe it served as an estate for the Incan emperor Pachacuti, and was abandoned after the 16th century Spanish conquest. Due to its remote location, the Spanish never discovered it, and it remained largely unknown and undisturbed by the outside world. Even citizens of Peru lost the knowledge of its existence to the passage of time. The major excavation work lasted until 1915, and the outlying buildings, as seen today, were later reconstructed for tourists. Bingham, who was deeply involved in the exploration and excavation work, was accused of malpractice because he was transporting artifacts to the Yale University Museum, which local scholars and media members saw as smuggling and stealing, despite the fact that his actions were technically legal. Under pressure, the landowners demanded rent from the explorers, and started making efforts to actually chase them away. After 1915, several civilian groups had formed in Peru to protect and defend Machu Picchu. The restoration effort is ongoing. It's believed that by 1976, 30% of the site had been restored. As for the native families that Bingham met when he first took the picture that revealed Machu Picchu to the world, they're mostly gone. The attention that his arrival brought affected their way of life. It's been speculated that landowners started charging rent and two of the families left. The family that stayed was subsequently hired by the government to supervise the archaeological site and serve as caretakers. Acropolis of Athens The Acropolis of Athens is an ancient citadel above the Greek city dating back to the 5th century BCE. A part of it, its Parthenon, the Temple of Athena, can be seen here in this rare 1839 daguerreotype photograph in near ruin prior to much of the restoration work. This is the first known photograph of the temple, and it was taken by Jolie de Lotpiniere, a French businessman and father to the fourth Prime Minister of Quebec, Canada. Many features, such as monuments to foreign kings and an Islamic mosque, were later added during Byzantine, Frankish, and Ottoman occupation, and were removed after the Greek War of Independence ushered in a movement to return the site to its original glory in 1830. When modern Greece was founded in 1830, after declaring its independence from the Ottoman Empire, preservation and reconstruction of monuments and art from classical Greece was prioritized by the newly established government. They were intended to be focal points to form and solidify a national identity. Charged with the project in the 1890s, Greek engineer Nikolas Balanos developed a technique to restore and preserve the monuments, including adding metal reinforcements, removing much of the structure's internal mass, and using ancient fragments on the ground as material. The technique was an example of an architectural practice known as anastylosis, which seeks to restore architectural sites using materials and methods that closely resemble the original ones. Balanos worked on the Temple of Athena Nike, which had been subjected to a less advanced anastylosis in 1836. He also restored a section of the Parthenon and the Erechtheion. Balanos' work was completed over two decades, transforming the Acropolis into its modern image by 1935. Unfortunately, his techniques resulted in damage to the monument, and a commission was formed in 1975 to re-restore the Acropolis. These modern modifications mix reassembled material from the original construction with a small amount of Mount Penteli marble. Due to the experience obtained from discovering that some of the methods used by Bolanos were arguably more harmful than helpful to the conservation of the Acropolis structures, it was decided that all modern changes must be designed to be reversible and easily modifiable. Stonehenge Constructed between 3000 and 2000 BCE, Stonehenge is believed to have been an important prehistoric burial and spiritual complex, but it was mostly a forgotten curiosity until around 1906, 
when this photo was taken by Lieutenant P.H. Sharp from a hot air balloon of the Corps of Royal Engineers. Not only was it the first aerial photograph of the site, it was also the very first aerial photograph of any archaeological site in Britain. Stonehenge has been protected by law since the passing of the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act in 1882. John Constable's 1835 painting of Stonehenge gives a good indication of the monument's appearance before modern intervention, as it's a little-known dark secret that the present-day circular arrangement of the monument is largely a recreation. The dilapidated state of the monument matches what Sharp observed and captured from the hot air balloon. This 1875 photo, possibly the earliest known of the site, offers a glimpse of the rock pile and the roads that used to pass by it before most of the stones were moved. The first alterations were made to sell tickets in 1901, and the form as we now know it was completed with modern machinery in 1958. Yet some have felt that the reconstruction efforts have been so invasive and generally hidden or masked for tourists that the managers of the site are being dishonest with the public. A creator of the Cambridge University Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology has stated that, quote, nearly all the stones have been moved in some way and are standing in concrete. Practices that have been deemed dishonest are the lack of mention of the extensive restoration efforts in the guidebooks accessible at the site, and that the public can only view the archaeological site at a distance of 10 yards, or 9.44 meters, which is reportedly done so the site can be preserved. The Sphinx This 1849 photo by French photographer Maxime Ducamp is the oldest known photo of the Great Sphinx of Giza. Cut from pneumolytic limestone bedrock by ancient Egyptians around 2500 BCE, it's believed it was buried up to its shoulders in sand by 1400. The sculpture, one of the oldest known to mankind, has experienced varied erosion due to the layered technique used to build it. The uneven deterioration has mostly done away with its facial features, while leaving the lower body parts almost intactly solid. Truthfully, the Great Sphinx is so ancient that factual information about who built it and when is still debated by archaeologists and academics. Most Egyptologists, however, believe that the Sphinx was commissioned by Pharaoh Khafre, who ordered the building of the Second Pyramid in the same site. In the first of many excavations, Pharaoh Tetmosis IV cleared the sand from the Sphinx's paws after it came to him in a dream, and then placed this carved dream steel at its base. In the dream, the Sphinx had instructed him to free it from the sand and return to the throne of Egypt. By the Roman period, it was entirely unearthed as a celebrated gathering place, but was buried again before the arrival of modern explorers. It wasn't until 1936 that a final dig, led by Emile Berets, unmasked the entire monument as it's known today. Berets, however, led some efforts that had more recently been deemed unnecessary, damaging, or contaminating. The Sphinx's head was reinforced with cement, but the UNESCO investigation revealed that the head made one of the strongest structural parts of the sculpture, meaning that the cement needs to be removed. New casing stones were also added to the sculpture, which did not truly match the ancient materials used. Since 1988, experts have been directing and suggesting solutions to preservation challenges created by the original restoration. El Castillo The Temple of Kukulkan, renamed El Castillo by European explorers, was captured in this 1892 photo that's one of the earliest images of the unrestored site in the Mayan pre-Columbian archaeological city of Chichen Itza. Archaeologist Sylvanus Morley would not begin working on the site until 1923, when it was still in shambles and covered by jungle greenery. All the vegetation that had taken over the pyramid prevented them from entering the structure for 10 years. Once inside, they found sculptures, jewelry, and multiple findings of archaeological significance. The earlier pre-restoration photos were taken by Tobert Mahler, a German-Italian explorer who later adopted the Latinized name Theoberto and devoted his life to capturing the Mayan ruins in photographs and written records. In 1876, he photographed other sites in Mitla and Palenque. After receiving a hefty inheritance, he moved to Yucatan, near Chichen Itza. The pyramid, used for religious events and ritual sacrifices, was built between 800 and 900 CE and was mysteriously abandoned in the 15th century. It measures an impressive 79 feet, or 24 meters in height. Known to the Maya as the Temple of Kukulkan after their feathered serpent god, in the spring and autumn equinoxes, the sun casts a shadow that creates the illusion of a feathered serpent crawling down the side of the pyramid. It's a feature that's representative of the Mayan's advanced understanding of astronomy and mathematics. Today, the structure can be visited by tourists, and some of its chambers and secrets accessible to the public, including an enormous sacred sinkhole that's 65 feet or 20 meters deep. <laughs>